Welcome to Space News from the Electric Universe, brought to you by the Thunderbolts Project at thunderbolts.info. In January of 2006, NASA launched its New Horizons spacecraft on its mission to investigate the dwarf planet Pluto and beyond to the Kuiper Belt. In July of this year, the spacecraft is scheduled to achieve the first ever close-up flyby of Pluto, which is more than 4.5 billion miles from Earth. Like the scientific world at large, the Electric Universe community eagerly awaits the findings of the New Horizons mission. We note that the changing picture of planetary science, including self-evidently electromagnetic phenomena not predicted nor explained by conventional models, may provide clues for what to expect in the Plutonian environment. Today, we ask physicist Eugene Begashoff to provide a brief overview of the New Horizons mission including the theoretical possibilities offered by the Electric Universe. Scientists have discovered a lot of satellites of Pluto in recent years. When evaluating the risk to NASA's New Horizons spacecraft from the Electric Universe perspective, one should consider the presence of electrostatically charged dust particles in the environment of Pluto, its moon Charon or other satellites. For example, on our moon, we know that strong electric fields sometimes levitate dust up to hundreds of kilometers high, and this activity is highest at every full moon, when Earth's magneto tail sweeps over the moon. And scientists with NASA's MAVEN mission are still puzzling over a cloud of levitated dust in Mars's atmosphere, which has been visible since the spacecraft's arrival at Mars. At New Horizons' current speed, which is somewhere around 15 kilometers per second relative to Pluto, dust particles in the Plutonian environment could conceivably either damage the spacecraft or at least disorient it. One of the main instruments to orient any probe in space is a so-called star tracker. Basically, this is a camera, and this camera can easily mistake a dust particle for a star, as was recently the case with the ESA Rosetta probe at Comet 67P. Even an encounter with a single one millimeter sized dust particle could prove catastrophic for the craft, and the behavior of such particles in case of some significant electric effects being present may be quite unpredictable. Also, if we consider the radial differences in electromagnetic environments in solar system, which are frequently being mentioned in the Electric Universe community, then the high speed of the spacecraft relative to Pluto would mean quite the rapid changes in these environments with respect to the spacecraft itself, and the presence of another body like Pluto or one of its satellites may provoke unexpected and dangerous electric activity. In my opinion, it is not completely impossible for us to observe here something similar to what happened to Cassini spacecraft in 2005. I'll remind you that it has been hit by an accelerated electron beam, basically an electric discharge from the, from the Saturn's moon Hyperion during its flyby at this moon. All of this is especially dangerous since the New Horizons spacecraft will not contact the Earth on the day of its closest approach to Pluto, thus providing more resources for the scientific instruments. So the scientists would be li very limited in their ability to alter anything if something goes wrong. And in the worst case, the probe might just enter the safe mode or even shut down completely, aborting the scientific operations. This is not very likely, of course, but still possible in my opinion. Well, anyway, let's hope that wouldn't happen. We must note that scientists have only recently discovered several of Pluto's moons, and it's possible that other unknown satellites are present. We can't completely rule out that a large cloud of dust debris could be there in this system. And the system itself not only consists of a large number of objects, but it is also quite compact. The farthest moon of Pluto, Hydra, is only 65,000 kilometers away, so the moons are remarkably tightly assembled. The diameter of the whole system is less than 10 diameters of the Earth, and there are at least six bodies in there. The dynamics of such a system could be extremely complex. Although there is an orbital resonance between the bodies, it's not completely accurate, and there is still some chaos to the system. So if there is some sort of electrical interaction between these moons and Pluto, in my opinion, one might even expect an exchange of dust particles or gaseous atmospheric components between Pluto and, for instance, Charon. Or, and this is again speculation, we could see dust fountains or so-called plumes of electrostatically levitated dust. 
However, planetary scientists, of course, may be expected to interpret these phenomena as evidence of so-called cryovolcanoes. Pluto's system is extremely inclined with respect to the ecliptic plane, so there is no passing of the moon's magneto tail in front of the other, not at the time of the flyby at least. However, the New Horizons probe will approach in the respective shadows of Pluto and Charon, so the probe itself will pass through these induced magneto tails that are formed by the solar wind when it is blowing round the planet. Theoretically, this could create problems for the probe's electronics, or at least some unexpected electron or ion flux spikes. It is worth noting here that NASA scientists have equipped this probe quite well. It has instruments to measure the plasma and charged particles' behavior, and hopefully we will receive a lot of highly valuable data. Pluto is also interesting because of its high eccentricity, which in that regard makes it similar to a comet. Pluto's atmosphere, although it is very rarefied in terms of density, is still very big in terms of geometry, considering the planet's tiny size, and this atmosphere could be said to resemble a cometary coma. Of course, one of the most intriguing questions about Pluto is how it acquired and how it maintains such a big atmosphere, because the body is obviously very far from the sun and should be pre pretty much dead and inert. So one wonders if effects could be involved similar to those proposed by the proponents of the electric comet theory. These theorists state that the high eccentricity of a rocky body, such as a comet, may cause it to interact electrochemically with the solar wind, and that could cause what conventional comet science describes as outgassing. So theoretically, we might suggest that on Pluto this process could be the source of the gaseous or plasma materials that constitute its large atmosphere. We know that as Pluto moves from aphelion to perihelion, the atmosphere gets much thicker, just like a cometary coma does. This is one of many dramatic changes that are observed on Pluto, including the mysterious darkening of its atmosphere by more than 5% in about a 20-year period, or the rise of atmospheric pressure for about two times up, or a reddening of its surface observed in the recent years and other seasonal changes. It has even been proposed in the scientific literature that so-called gravitational lensing is occurring on Pluto. However, I think that rather it might be that Pluto's atmosphere could be considerably thicker than planetary scientists currently think, rather than the accepted processes involving thermal processes and atmospheric escape, Pluto and its system could be more electromagnetically dynamic than planetary scientists believe. One other interesting possibility is that Pluto might have a magnetic field, because to this day we don't know for sure if there is any. If such a field indeed exists, that would first of all significantly alter the electromagnetic environment of the planet, and secondly that would probably rule out many hypotheses of Pluto's inner composition, because you know a piece of ice would hardly have any magnetic field. In general, the standard planetary models have led to many puzzles and unresolved mysteries in our solar system. It seems that every year we, we hear of new startling discoveries that send our scientists back to the drawing board. Hopefully, the surprises that NASA's New Horizon team encounters will be met with a spirit of curiosity and openness so that the mission might live up to its inspiring name. For continuous updates on space news from the Electric Universe, stay tuned to Thunderbolts.info.